last season, things were starting to look super bleak for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Ron Hextall was a general manager, and it seemed like everything he did had no direction to it. He started the offseason prior whenever he traded Mike Matheson for Jeff Petrie, then he traded John Marino for Ty Smith, and then sent Ty Smith to the minors all year because of cap troubles. As the season went on, things got more bleak for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Fire Hextall chance started to break out at home games whenever the team would start to lose, which was very frequently. The Penguins missed the playoffs for the first time in 16 years because of this man, and it ended up costing him his job. Before he was officially let go, he had a lot of marks left on the team. He brought in a lot of contracts that many thought would be unmovable, and it would be very hard to get rid of them if they would. The most glaring of which was Mikhail Granlin. He was brought in after the Penguins cleared cap space at the trade deadline, and then he proceeded to do nothing in the final games of the regular season. A lot of people thought that the team would have to buy him out, but that was until the Penguins got a new savior, and that savior is Kyle Dubas. Kyle Dubas was able to turn the team with no direction around, and now it seems like the Penguins actually have an idea of what they want to be. Everything might not be looking super great still for the Penguins, it looks a sure of a lot better than it did a couple months ago. Kyle Dubas was brought in right before the draft, and he managed to pull off a lot of miracles since then. The first move was bringing in Riley Smith for a third round pick, and then he drafted Brandon Yeager in the first round of the draft. Between free agency and trades, Kyle Dubas was able to undo a lot of the mistakes that Ron Hextall made for the team. In this video, I want to go over every move that he's made so far, and how I think it's going to work out for the Penguins. First off, let's dive into all the people that the Penguins have lost so far this offseason. Off in free agency, the Penguins have lost Stan Heinen, Brian Dumoulin, Dmitry Kulikov, and Jason Zucker. Heinen started off great last season, but then cooled off and then didn't do much the rest of the regular season. Dumoulin was once a legend on this team, but as time's gone on, his body's given out on him and he's not the same as he was. It was time to move on from him. Kulikov was brought in at the trade deadline. He didn't really do much because he ended up getting injured very fast into his tenure with the Penguins, and then that was it. Losing Jason Zucker to the Coyotes kind of does hurt though. He was the heart and soul last year. At different points in the season when games weren't going well, Zucker was the one thing that kept beating for the team. He played electric every night and went on a very hot streak with goals towards the end of the year. I did agree with not giving him a lot of money or term because he is old and has trouble with injuries. But out of any players on this list, he will be the one that I miss watching the most. And more recently, in the Eric Carlson trade, the Penguins lost Casey Smith, Mikhail Granlin, Jeff Petrie, Nathan Legare, and Jan Ruda. Casey DeSmith has been with the team for a long time in a backup role. He was solid at times, but other times he would let the team down in this play, especially when he was called upon to be the starter. Granlin only played a handful of games with the team, but the games that he played were very disappointing. He only had one goal throughout his time with the Penguins, and he was moved very quickly. Jeff Petrie also only played one season with the Penguins, and he was kind of disappointing for what they had brought him in for. He did provide more offense than some of the other defensemen on the team, but what they brought him in for mainly was his physical play, and at times it really let us down. He did throw some big hits from time to time, but overall his physical play is not what they brought him in for. Ray is kind of one of those magic beam picks that the Penguins had. He was drafted in a lower round, but then he proceeded to do well initially once he was drafted, and then he got brought up to the AHL where he's kind of been struggling since. I think changing teams is the best thing for his career, and hopefully he can put it together, because I was once very excited for him. Jan Ruda was brought in last offseason, and it was one of those things that Hextall did that kind of made you scratch your head. The Penguins didn't really need him, but he was supposed to be more solid defensively and could throw the body around. He ended up injured a lot of time with the Penguins and was disappointing in the games that he did play later in the year. But now on a brighter note, let's move to the people that the Penguins did add, because it's a lot better than this list. With the way that Dubas has been playing this offseason, I could see even more people coming in than this, but right now, this is the current list of all the players that the Penguins have brought in this offseason. Ryan Graves was a big get for the blue line. He'll either play top four minutes with Latang or Carlson and should be a very solid defensive partner for either of them. Matt Nieto is a solid depth signing, just there to provide depth for the team, something that they were lacking in the past couple years. Will Butcher had a very strong rookie season the other year with the New Jersey Devils, but after that he struggled to find a role within the league. If he can't find a role with the Penguins, hopefully he finds a role with the wilkes barre Scram Penguins and he can find his game down in the AHL. Riley Smith was exactly what the Penguins needed, especially after they decided to let go of Jason Zucker. He may be getting up there in age, but so is a lot of people on the team. He also has one more year left on his contract, so it's a very good get. Whenever the contract was initially signed, Alex Nadelkovich seemed like a depth signing for the Penguins, but now with Casey DeSmith gone from the team, he seems to be the backup for the starting year. Magnus Helberg, though, should just be a third-string goalie and hopefully can step in if injuries happen. Lars Eller will probably take the third-line center role, and hopefully he does good. He's getting up there in age as well, but hopefully he's still solid defensively. Olachari is a great get. Very good defensively, throws the body around, and is a very electric player. He's going to be a fan favorite here. I'm going to skip Ryan Shea and Redeem Zahorna because they're probably just going to be AHL depth signings. Andreas Janssen is interesting because in Toronto he is very good, but in New Jersey he was not able to find the lineup very much, and then he was traded to San Jose where he kind of did a little bit better. Vinny Anastroza has bounced around the league a little bit, but he seems to be very solid whenever he's called upon. He's probably just going to be a depth signing for the team, but if worse comes to worse, he can be called up into the top six to try and provide some offense. 
Rem Pitlick was a throw-in from the Eric Carlson trade from the Montreal Canadiens. He's probably just considered depth, but he does have a very good scoring touch. Personally, I would like to see him play in the top six a little bit when injury happens, because I really think that he could thrive with someone like Crosby. Now for the big get of the offseason, Eric Carlson. Eric Carlson's going to reshape how this team plays, and it's going to be very interesting to watch. For 50 minutes a night, the Penguins are going to have one of Latang or Carlson on the ice, and that alone is just amazing. Carlson is also an elite power play quarterback, and hopefully he can finally bring the Penguins power play up to the top of the league where it should be with all the talent that they have. I'm also excited to see if Carlson can help Crosby get an age 36, 100 point season. That'd be awesome to see and something that's not really happened in the NHL. Coming into free agency, it was a little unclear what the Penguins would be doing in net because Tristan Jari was set to be a UFA, but we got our answer on July 1st. Instead of opting to go with someone else, Dubas chose to stick with Jari, and I really hope that it pays off. In the short amount of time he's been in the league, he's gone to two all-star games and has been very good when he's healthy. When he gets in his head or is unhealthy though, it's a completely different case. He was a big reason why the Penguins missed the chance to be in the playoffs this year, especially in that game against the Blackhawks. I really hope that he's able to get back to the top of his game, because when he's on, like I said, best of the game. The other three re-signings are kind of just depth re-signings, but I'm kind of excited to see Ty Smith get more of a chance in the NHL. When he was up with the big club, he did very well, and I want to see him thrive more in Pittsburgh as he is brought in to do. I have a lot of hope for next season, and I really hope that's not misplaced. The bottom six may not be elite offensively, but I do think they'll be a lot better defensively, which is something that they've really struggled with in past years. Hopefully with this as well, Jeff Carr will get more of a small role on the team and he won't be playing big minutes like he's been in seasons past. I loved Big Jeff when he first got here, but age has really taken a toll on his body and he just needs to retire honestly at this point. But even if he does, he still doesn't free the Penguins from his cap hit, so he might as well play his final year. The other thing that does give me hope though is that if something isn't working with the Penguins, Dubas isn't afraid to sit on his hands and he'll actually change it. He's seen this time and time again in his time in Toronto, such as when he traded Peter Mrazek to the Chicago Blackhawks after it was showing that it wasn't going to work out with the team. Honestly, as a Pens fan, I haven't been this excited for the team since 2018. Dubas has brought in a whole new light to this team and I'm really excited to see how this team plays out. Eric Carlson is going to be such an amazing thing to watch and I can't wait to see him play with the other greats on this team. If you've made it this far into the video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Also, leave a comment and tell me what you think about the Penguins in their upcoming season. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.